Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second edition of the Text Analytics Workshop. Our host, our host for today is Lilia, and she happens to be a senior data scientist and an ML engineer at ICIMS. I'd like to hand over to Lilia now. Lilia, you have the floor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, great. Thanks, Na. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Lilia. I work as a data scientist, and today I'm happy to introduce you to the topic of um, NLP preprocessing uh, and um, uh, vectorization. And let's uh, start. Let me share the screen, and please. Give me some up if you able to see what I'm sharing. Yeah, all good. Okay, great. Okay, let's first go to slides. Um, let me open from the beginning. Okay, so it's a part two of the series of text analytics workshop. And in the first part, you hopefully got familiar with uh, what is the text analytics, um, what are applications of it uh, to the modern uh, problems. Um, and uh, in the second part, I'm going to cover some definitions and show examples of uh, how to perform the processing and uh, tokenization um, and the vectorization in uh, Python. And uh, let's first, oh, let me do a presentation mode. Yes, okay. Okay, so how do computers understand words? And um, yeah, the answer is that, yes, they're soulless creatures and they don't understand words as we humans do that. Uh, they first need to encode it and um, Words need to be encoded to numbers and then bits, so zero ones, uh, that's how it's stored in uh, computer systems. And then they perform operations, uh, what we're asking from them, uh, from words. Um, and the process of uh, encoding texts, uh, in particular words or sentences or whole documents uh, into numbers, it's called uh, text vectorization. And uh, numerical representations of texts are called embeddings. Um, in a sense, most popular types of embeddings are word embeddings. And before moving on, just last second, I couldn't skip that. I remember the really nice video on understanding. Uh, it's a speech recognition uh, of a Scottish accent. I just recently visited first time in my life was uh, cotton. And I think this video is pretty funny and it's very short. Maybe I'll play just uh, half of it. Um, first of all, uh, can you hear the voice, uh, the sound of the video? And we'll start again. Press the buttons. Can you hear it? Yes. Oh, okay, amazing. Great. Voice recognition technology in the left. Voice recognition technology in the left, in Scotland. Ever tried voice recognition technology? No. They don't do Scottish accents. Eleven. Would you please repeat that? Eleven. 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 Would you please repeat that? Eleven. Who's idea was this? You need to try an American accent. Eleven. Eleven. This is Irish. Eleven. 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 Yes. Please repeat that. Um, 
I will probably, uh, for the sake of time, will not play the whole video. Uh, but I hope you got an idea of uh, how technologies are struggling. And uh, it's really um, something maybe of a crazy future when you <laughs> don't have, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> a manual <laughs> input, but only, <clears throat> just a second. Uh, but completely <clears throat> relying on technology, uh, then maybe not ideal uh, to live in this world. <clears throat> okay, let me come back to slides. And um, yeah, so as I mentioned that um, texts, uh, in order to for computers to, pro uh, to process them, uh, they need to be vectorized. And um, here are... Um, I enumerated almost all techniques uh, for text vectorizations. And uh, in today's session, uh, it's like introduction, introductory sessions. I'll cover first two of them. It's a uh, back of words and term frequency inverse document frequency, uh, TF, EDF. And the uh, word to work and transformers um, are not covered in this session. And But if there's interest, and of course, maybe um, we will have uh, uh, another workshop, uh, another tutorial on uh, more advanced uh, text processing techniques. But um, even like for this first of two, um, I use them in my daily job and uh, with existence of transformers, there is still uh, for, um, for many tasks they are still applicable and we will talk about it. Um, and um, um, there's no need to apply really advanced um, sophisticated techniques if uh, the task um, can be solved with something simpler. And let's move on. And the first uh, technique is the back of words. And here I found a really nice um, picture of it. So it's a back. And the back means that uh, all words are put into that and um, in, an in an ordered way. So it um, doesn't really factory into um, giving a weight to the word, if it's appeared in the beginning or end and then in which context it appeared. Um, so for this example, for example, I love dogs, hate cats, and I love cats, hate dogs. It would be the same um, in terms of back of words. Um, it would be processed the same way. Uh, but still, uh, this uh, processing may suffice for the global context. Uh, for example, movie sentiment analysis, restaurant feedback, uh, where the context, um, like what particular elements of a movie uh, um, reviewer didn't like uh, or enjoyed, is not important, but more is important of uh, knowing if in general uh, are they happy uh, with the movie or restaurant or not. And here's the... Um, uh, on the right side, uh, if you can see my pointer, um, is the um, encoding of a sentence, uh, of a review. And it could be seen that this vector can be very, very long uh, because we uh, encode each word um, separately. Um, and um, it may be, for example, that um, two words which have a similar meaning uh, may be sweet and great they are um have a, they are quite similar or maybe there could be word of uh, great and excellent and uh, for this model they would be still treated as separate words um and that's something that um um is uh, handled better by more advanced models but in this case, uh, it's like this, and it again, it may suffice for our um, problem at hand. Uh, another technique is uh, more smart, uh, is smarter. It's a TFEDF, term frequency, inverse document frequency. And uh, as the name suggests, it's an algorithm that uses the frequency of words to determine how relevant those words are to a given document. Um, so the weight on the right side seen 
So it's proportional to the term frequency in the document. So for example, if cat is occurs three times in a particular document, it would be three um, um, divided by um, number of documents. And uh, it's uh, inversely proportional to the frequency of occurrence of the word in all documents in the collection. For example, if cat occurred in um, also only three documents out of 1,000, uh, it means that um, so 1,000 would be on top and three would be here. It would be a really large number. So logarithm would be also in a degree of this would be a quite large number. And it means that the weight of this word cat would be uh, quite high for this particular document because uh, this word is not that um, common uh, among all documents and is accurate um, in a, this particular document. And uh, before moving further, let's uh, go to Python and see examples of how to um, how to calculate a bag of words and um, turn uh, TFEDF. And here is an uh, example of uh, Scalern. Um, so Scalern is the Python library uh, that has a lot of implementations of uh, pre-processing and uh, machine learning algorithms, common machine learning algorithms. Um, I would say not common, but standard, like uh, uh, logistic regression, linear regression, um, classification, uh, also like uh, naive bias and others. Um, the, and um, just with a couple of lines of code, you can implement, um, you can do a lot with color. And in this case, I will show an example of uh, back of words. Uh, so you need to import from Scalorn future extraction text, count vectorizer. And this is exactly back of words model. And here uh, you can specify also a maximum number of features um, for this model. Uh, and it's based uh, on the frequency of occurring uh, this, of those features. And here's I uh, put examples of uh, uh, two reviews uh, I found for uh, the recent Oppenheimer movie. Um, I didn't go to see it uh, and um, um, I usually read reviews before uh, seeing uh, any uh, movie or going uh, to some place in the city. And this case is not uh, different. I wanted to know what uh, people think about this movie. So I got a uh, uh, couple of reviews and let's look at them. Um, so to in order to uh, get uh, vocabulary uh, for from these reviews, we um, call a method fit. Uh, uh, first we initialize this count vectorizer, then we call method fit. And we can get this get future names uh, top 10, uh, uh, not top 10, but all the, um, I just printed out uh, top 10, but there's actually more, um, all the words. And you can see they are already um, lowercase uh, for, uh, for for this uh, two reviews. Um, and then we uh, can uh, vectorize uh, our uh, reviews. And uh, I transformed it uh, for um, lookability like uh, to pandas data frame. And you can um, see that it's uh, created 32 columns or features. So this is uh, each of our words and they are vectorized by um, occurrence in this particular text. And here you can see um, some of the uh, stop words. We will talk uh, about them in a bit. Uh, so. For example, they occur two times in this text. Um, and another technique is the TFEDF. Again, uh, you can uh, import it from the same um, uh, Scalorn feature extraction text and uh, initialize it. Uh, again, max features, uh, norm, uh, will not touch on this at the moment. And then um, again, you can print uh, get future names, and um, also get our um, numerical representations for each of our uh, reviews. 
and as you can see uh, here, uh, there were integers. Um, and here we have not integers, but uh, uh, float numbers, uh, decimal numbers. And this is like a frequency. It's um, um, exactly from this formula that I showed you. Um, and um, yeah, so th th this is uh, considered um, to be um, kind of stand uh, gold standard technique, which is uh, usually used uh, for machine learning algorithms. Okay, let's come back uh, to slides. Okay, so as you uh, saw uh, from um, our vectorization is that uh, this, um, uh, our vectors are quite long. And here I just uh, fed only two uh, reviews, uh, but already there was like the length of the vector was 32 for each of the review. And uh, imagine if we have a uh, very uh, lot of uh, reviews and uh, those vectors will become endless, like uh, because uh, there are so many different words and variations of words. Um, and in, in order to avoid this, uh, because it's very expensive co uh, to compute uh, those vectors and then do manipulations for when feeding into machine learning algorithm on those vectors, uh, we need to somehow to uh, collide them to make them shorter uh, in order to ease the process of uh, um, doing uh, useful manipulations on them. And for this, the preprocessing step um, should be done before we uh, vectorize um, our uh, input texts. Um, for example, I, I put here like a cup uh, and cups. Maybe it's not that meaningful uh, to have uh, two versions of this word. And we can reduce this to a single version cup and finalize and finalize uh, to to possible writing of the same word. Again, um, that can be probably uh, brought, uh, brought up to the same um, word. And um, here's a list of the uh, main types of uh, text preprocessing uh, techniques. Uh, the first one is tokenization. Uh, then it's um, noise removal, stop words, lowercase, punctuation uh, removal. But there, uh, here's a trick, uh, and I will tell you about this. Uh, it's not always useful to remove punctuation, or maybe you rem um, uh, remove it uh, for tokenization, but still um, it, it may uh, reveal some additional uh, signals, give some additional signals about the uh, text and the sentiment, for example, of the text. If there are a lot of exclamation marks, and maybe the person is uh, has a really strong opinion about a subject, and uh, it may be necessary to take this into account when um, um, detecting the sentiment of uh, of a review, for example. And we can uh, bring this as a separate feature, uh, for example, the number of exclamation marks in a particular review. Uh, and another two are uh, related to text normalization. There are stemming and limitization. And most important uh, out of them is uh, tokenization. And um, the three other of them, um, they kind of becoming obsolete, especially with more advanced techniques, which can handle noise in text, uh, or like, um, especially transformer techniques. But tokenization is the standalone. Uh, it's uh, needed for every, even the most modern uh, machine learning uh, or deep learning technique. Um, and tokenization, what it is? Tokenization is the process of breaking a stream of textual data into words, terms, sentences, symbols, or some other meaningful elements called tokens. And here you can see example, natural language processing uh, is converted to natural language and processing. So those are units tokens. And in this case, that's a, a word tokens. And um, uh, next one is uh, stop words. And as I was showing you, um, so we uh, usually, for example, for sentiment task, uh, the add, 
uh, are I usually don't uh, not bring in any um, don't give any meaningful signal uh, to understanding the sentiment of the uh, of the review or um, in many other applications, not only sentiment analysis, but um, uh, for example, classification of uh, revealing some adverse reactions in drugs or um, understanding like um, prediction of uh, some um, stock market based on tweets. Uh, usually those uh, words, um, they do not bring any, uh, any meaningful information and they need to be removed. Um, yeah, and they are usually articles, interjections, conjunctions, and uh, they do not carry any semantic meaning. Um, and uh, of course, uh, um, when gene processing uh, should uh, know, like, for example, with their authorship of uh, uh, you trying to understand who is the author uh, for of the article, for example, and every author they have their uh, own style of writing. In this case, for example, stop words can bring a meaning um, and they can help uh, to understand the style. And um, um, in this in this uh, case, um, they stop words should be processed. Um, and again, um, maybe uh, they are moved out of the text as the features. For example, how many R's are there? How many ads are there? There's um, so there should be some consideration when uh, removing stop words. And the next one is uh, word normalization. Okay, what time? Um, it's uh, five minutes left. <laughs> okay, let's maybe have a little bit. Okay, trying to be faster. Uh, word normalization. Word normalization is a uh, um, there are two main techniques. One is stemming, and another one is lemmatization. Um, and um, stemming is uh, just um, a very crude heuristic process of removing excess from words. And it can be seen like here that uh, improve. So there's no word in English which is uh, called improve. So it's uh, just removing of a suffix. Um, and uh, this um, still used um, for tasks, uh, for, but more commonly is used lemmatization. Lemmatization is the process of bringing um, words to a dictionary form. Uh, usually it's based on vocabulary and morphological analysis. And um, this is, as I mentioned, is more commonly used uh, in um, during pre-processing. Um, okay, let me come back to our notebook and show examples of usage. Um, and um, here I need to introduce an LTK library. Um, um, it, I'm, I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. And this is this library for whom are not familiar is used uh, for uh, for preprocessing uh, very often. And here we uh, imported um, a few other libraries. I will not cover them for now. Um, and um, here we download uh, stop words. And the first time, because I have it already downloaded, it just loads for me. Uh, but first time it will ask you uh, to actually download. Um, and then uh, we import English stop words. And here are the top 10 stop words. Um, and um, in the string uh, library, there is also punctuation uh, that can be used. And um, in LTK, we can import the different uh, tokenizing methods. Word punk to another, for example, we import that method, and then we can write a function that uh, tokenizes our input text, and uh, we can also remove uh, punctuation and stop words and see if um, word has a punctuation stop words. We don't include it in the final set, and um, here we process, and here's the tokens. And here I specifically chose this example, and you can see that it didn't remove these two exclamation marks. So a person was very excited about um, this um, a movie, or it may be opposite, was not excited at all, but I put two exclamation marks. And this library didn't um, didn't remove this. And for this purposes, um, there are different uh, regex um, can be applied. Regex. Um, Again, I will not go, go into the detail, 
but it's uh, has uh, this form and something that can be learned and um um I actually didn't test, but um, I'm sure ChatGPT can handle this well. So you input a query maybe to create a regex for uh, removing uh, repeated um, punctuation marks, and maybe it will generate. I don't know. It's maybe it's good to test. Um, but um, relics usually um, can be quite tricky. This is quite simple, but I always forget about uh, how to create a, like complicated regex, and then I need to. Uh, remember again how the structure, the syntax of regex. And here's the regex X, and it removed uh, all our uh, all punctuations from the text. Um, and um, so this is uh, now uh, better for um, for tokenization process. Um, and uh, but again, uh, as I mentioned, that. Um, number of exclamation marks uh, can be uh, as a separate feature, especially for sentiment analysis, and can show how a person, uh, how strong is a person's opinion about a, a particular uh, a subject of review, and can be um, can be used as a, as a feature. And um, stemming, um, so that's the next uh, technique, and for stemming again, we can use an LTK library. Uh, and from LTK, stem snowball, we can input snowball stemmer. And there are different, there are porter stemmer, and I think uh, that's it. Uh, uh, maybe there are some others, but those are mostly used. So we can import uh, English uh, uh, snowball stemmer. And here you can see examples of how uh, it's stemmed uh, our review. You can see this um, just deleted uh, suffixes. Um, and also, uh, we can uh, use the same um, NLTK library and it can also import limitizer from it. Uh, in this case, I imported for net limitizer, but again, you can check the library and there are different other types of limitizers. And we limitized the text, and it can be seen that. Um, it brought them to more or less um, standard form, except that, uh, for example, made, I don't see that it cre um, made it in the present form. Um, and um, for this, um, last but not least, um, there's a really cool library called Spicy. And this is um, more advanced and uh, usually when I during my uh, studies or work, I go directly to this library because it can do a lot of, uh, like it's a kung fu of uh, NLP. Um, and um, it can do not only uh, limitization, uh, but can also um, extract a part of speech uh, tags uh, and uh, other uh, information, for example, uh, semantic uh, can draw a structure, um, a semantic tree of the sentence and extract um, other information about uh, each uh, word. And here we can see, for example, that, um, yeah, make, it made the form of make. Um, so that's what I wanted. And part of speech uh, tag is a verb. Uh, and this is information as a part of speech can also be used as a features. Um, again, uh, for for example, for uh, plagiarism detection or authorship, uh, some authors tend to use more expressive language, for example, adjectives, and we can count them and use as a features for to train our machine learning model. And uh, that's uh, it. And uh, here. Um, I'm approaching approach the end of uh, our session. And here's the list. I put a list of uh, useful NLP sources uh, to start um, playing around and digging into NLP. And here's like, uh, first off is the spacey documentation. You can check it. There are a lot of examples and sources. Uh, it's really cool. And here's an excellent article on Medium about NLP. Natural language processing is fun. Um, also, I uh, advise to check that. And here's an NPR review article as well, as well on uh, Medium. Um, also quite um, interesting. And here are more advanced, um, but advanced in the sense that um, 
uh, for NLP enthusiasts, it's, um, it, those are good sources to uh, get um, um, to, to, to get uh, up to track to uh, recent advances or the most cool stuff or the topic of interest in in uh, in uh, natural language processing. Um, my personal preference, and that's how I, I think I fell in love with NLP, was uh, Sebastian Rudder's uh, NLP newsletter. By the way, he studied in Ireland, um, but unfortunately now um, he I think uh, he moved out of academia and he works for um, DeepMind, I think, or somewhere else, and he is not so active on publishing newsletter, but still uh, it's a really good source, and there was a recent newsletter. Uh, you can check it out. And here are other sources. Um, some of them were suggested by my colleagues at work. And there, here's a Twitter uh, accounts uh, you can follow if you're active on Twitter. And um, yes, so that's it. Uh, if you want, I can put this in a, a Slack. Um, uh, uh, or oh, not Slack, uh, in, a, in, a Zoom, <laughs> in a Zoom comment section. Um, and uh, you can check out the sources. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, let's uh, finish officially. And uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you thank you to Lilia. Uh, thank you for presenting. Um, does anyone have any questions, please? Okay, send the resource. Thank you for that. Yes, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask here or reach out to me on LinkedIn or um, if you're on a uh, AI channel also, feel free to reach out. Okay. Um, glad to talk about the topic I like. So, um, I, I just see that we have uh, one in the Q&A whether we'll share the slides in the notebook. Um, I think we will put it on the Women in AI GitHub, right, Lilia? That's right. So we will uh, we will put the recording of the meeting as well uh, later on online in uh, on YouTube, and we'll share the the documents as well, so so you can use it. Um, thanks, Lilia. That was that was really really useful, and I loved uh, all the details that you have for the next. Uh, kind of where to follow up more things and all the details. It was really, really nice. Um, I have one question. So I, I know maybe it's a little bit more um, advanced, but when you were talking about uh, stemming, is there any ways or mm -hmm. do people kind of look at uh, synonyms as well? Not just words with the same stem, but kind of looking more from the dictionary point of view of like what words are synonyms to each other? Yes, absolutely. And that's uh, all uh, synonyms, for example, about uh, word to work or transformer models. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, understanding that um, um, oh, which word um, great, um, fantastic are similar words. Um, they're not particular synonyms, but uh, um, for example, um, but um, yeah, you got the point. So each synonym in a word to work and um, transformer, will, they will get all the same uh, word representations. And uh, this information is um, would allow like text which uh, are more, almost similar, but um, nevertheless they have uh, different words, uh, will be encoded in the same way. Um, mm -hmm. With uh, back of words or CFEDF, uh, this word, uh, this text would be encoded differently. Uh, for example, um, the um, the weather tomorrow is amazing, um, and the sentence uh, the sky looks uh, blue tomorrow. So, sorry, I just made it on, out of my <laughs> mind. But uh, uh, from saying two two of the sentences. Um, uh, 
person would understand the same. So the weather is great. So they would be good weather. But uh, if we're using TFD for uh, back of words, they will encode it uh, differently because uh, the two sentences use completely different words. Mm -hmm. uh, but if again uh, using port to back or transformer models, they will understand that these sentences are similar. Okay. Yeah. Thank. Thank you so much. Welcome. Um, right. I'm asked where to share sharing slides and notebook. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where to do that. If organizers can suggest, uh, yes, absolutely, I can share. So I think I think uh, we have uh, like Women in AI has a uh, a GitHub account where we usually post uh, all the kind of these codes and so on. So I think we will put it up there and we'll share it after the presentation with, with everyone in the attendees and, and all that. Yep, yes. So you could email it to us and then we'll just share it on the GitHub repository. Okay. So thank you so much for coming, Lilia. And I like, actually enjoy the build gradually. You explained before you should us how the codes work and if it's a thing. So thank you for that. If you like to join, if you like to host some other time, I've left um, a link to um, a speaker form. You could fill that out and would like to hear your thoughts on the session as well. That's to everyone. I'd like to hear your thoughts too on the session. So if you if you'd be kind enough to just fill out the link, it's not it won't take so much of your time. It's just about five questions. That would be great. And um, so that should be all. Meet you same time next week for the last part of the text analytics workshop. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank for you. Joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.